a thousand years ago. Earth reached its limit and got destroyed. Then a genius clocksmith who went by the name Y rebuilt the planet using only gears. He named the new planet he created the Clockwork Planet. Now in the present world, there is a boy called Naoto Mira, a young boy with an obsession with clocks. Even though he has never been able to fix one, he still hopes an automaton will fall from heaven to make his dream come true. As he is having these thoughts, a big black coffin comes crashing into his roof. He opens it only to see a beautiful female automaton in an unconscious state. Somewhere, Marie Breguet is freaking out because a worker dropped a container, saying that it was a national treasure that belongs to the Breguet family. Neato is a boy with extraordinary hearing. He can use this to find that the automaton is unconscious because her gear is stuck. Although he is unsure of how to fix her, he still gets to work. His hearing skills enable him to fix her in no time. Naoto decides to rest but an explosion occurs. The automaton has woken up and rescues Naoto. She takes him away from the collapsing building and only drops him after they made it to a safe distance. The automaton introduces herself to Naoto as Ryuzu. She thanks Naoto for repairing her and asks if he was able to repair her only by listening to the sound of her gears. Naoto says yes, and Ryuzu asks Naoto to become her master and he agrees. Marie tells the team chiefs about the gravity irregularity, which may cause the clockwork planet to fall. Later, she finds out that the military has already decided to purge the city, known as Kyoto Grid. Marie gets angry that the military is going to kill 20 million people living in the Kyoto Grid because they couldn't fix the gravity issue. Marie makes a call to the communication officer, Lemons, to tell him about the military's decision to purge the city. Upon her request, Lemons connects her to the service chief, Conrad. He tells her that the power is off, so it won't be easy to get to the 24th floor where the anomaly is. With the help of her bodyguard, a cyborg known as Halter, Marie gets to where the barrel is and reconnects it, restoring power in the process. There are nine hours and some minutes remaining to the purge, and Marie and the other clockmakers still can't find the anomaly. Marie doesn't give up. She asks the clockmakers to keep narrowing the parts down, but before they can work, the guild asks her to stop. Upon her refusal to withdraw, Marie's license gets revoked by Officer Lemons. This is when Marie realizes that Lemons is helping the military. Marie blames herself for being the reason the military wants to purge the entire Kyoto grid. She believes it is their way of getting to her. She decides to find a way to stop them in their mission. At the mall, Marie runs into Ryuzu and recognizes her immediately. Marie tells Naoto to return Ryuzu as she is the property of the Breguet family, and they are currently in need of her help. Naoto refuses to release Ryuzu to Marie. As they discuss what to do, Naoto's ears pick up another gravity anomaly noise. After it ends, Marie asks him how he was able to hear the noise even before any of them. Ryuzu lets Marie know that Naoto repaired her by only using sound. Marie asks Naoto's help to fix the situation. Naoto wants to refuse but Ryuzu tells him that her little sister, Anchor, is in the basement of the core tower. This gets him to change his mind immediately. Marie tells Naoto they need to hurry to the core tower before the army realizes their plan. Naoto replies that it's too late. The army already knows. Naoto's exceptional hearing lets him know there are 12 automata in the parking lot, so he can warn the others before they go in. Naoto's super hearing gives them an edge over the automata and they can destroy them all in no time. Lemons receives news that Marie is dead. He lies and says Marie got lost in the purge because he's afraid people will find out he killed her with Vacheron. Unknown to Lemons, the news he had received is fake and everything he said had been recorded by Halter. They continue their journey to the core tower but before they could make it, they are attacked by a bomb which they manage to dodge, thanks to Ryuzu. After she wakes up, Naoto asks her to marry him because he has fallen for her. Ryuzu admits she likes him but rejects him. She can't marry him because she's his servant. They finally make it to the 24th floor only to meet service chief Conrad and the rest of his team at the pressure control. Marie tells them that Naoto will help them in fixing the core tower, but they find it hard to believe. Conrad manages to convince them to give him the benefit of doubt for Marie's sake. Through his superb hearing, Naoto finds all the 18 anomalies within a matter of seconds. The clockmakers all get to work and quickly fix 12 of the areas pinpointed by Naoto, since it is in an area that humans can't get to. Ryuzu helps them repair the last problem. Marie fixes the remaining 5 anomalies. The clockmakers were happy and grateful to Naoto after he confirmed the repairs worked. The purge unexpectedly begins. Marie and the rest are thrown into confusion about how to salvage the situation. After lots of contemplation, Marie comes up with an idea which is to use Ryuzu's imaginary gear to reverse the energy output. Naoto opposes this idea making him and Marie get into an intense argument. Ryuzu, who has been watching all along, 
decides to sacrifice herself for the sake of the city. The purge gets into full mode and the city starts to fall. Yet, much to Lemon's and the army's shock, the city begins to rise again. Ryuzu's imaginary gear lets Marie and Naoto reverse gravity and save the city. Halter and Conrad buy time by destroying the Automata Lemon sends to kill them. After they stop the purge, Marie tries to fix Ryuzu but fails. Naoto takes over and successfully fixes his darling. When she opens her eyes, he weeps and hugs her tightly. When the public learned the government, army, and guild were part of the purge, everyone involved got punished, including Lemons. Marie receives a strange message through a shortwave radio transmission. In her anger, she goes to Naoto and asks him to help her trace it with his sensitive hearing. With Naoto's help, she finds out that the transmission was from Mai, an area around the industrial complex. When Ruzu asks what made Marie so mad, Halter tells her, making Marie even angrier. She asks Naoto to go with her to catch the sender but Ryuzu refuses. Halter uses the beautiful beach in May to lure Naoto to go with them. When they get to the May grid, they discover it is a dead city, where the core and clock tower ceased to work a long time ago. Naoto proposes that it must be because an initial Y series unit like Ryuzu existed in the city. Ryuzu supports his claim and helps them get into the factory. In the factory, they come across a big hole in the floor. Naoto claims that there is something in that hole but Marie and Halter are reluctant to go down there. Down the hole, they see the most giant weapon to ever exist. Naoto tells them all of the clock tower's parts were used to construct it, thereby leading to the death of the city. Marie threatens to tear it down, but as she approaches it, an automaton appears. Ryuzu recognizes it as Anchor. Without acknowledging Ryuzu, she goes into annihilation mode and attacks the four of them, all at once. Ryuzu tells Anchor she has one last chance to explain herself before she destroys her. Through his hearing, Naoto discerns that Anchor is not attacking because she wants to. Instead, it is only because she is not operating properly. Even so, Anchor continues to attack but thanks to Naoto's hearing, they can dodge her attacks. When it became clear she won't stop until they are all dead, Halter stops dodging and decides to face her head on. In trying to save Halter, Ryuzu and Naoto fall into the deep underground. Marie screams for Halter to save the duo, but he claims it is pointless since humans can't survive in the deep underground. Marie weeps and blames herself for getting Naoto killed. Once she's better, she decides to take revenge for Naoto. To start, she kidnaps the governor of the May Grid. Marie asks the governor what he knows about the giant weapon on the deepest floor of the Mai factory. At first, he denies knowing anything but tells the truth after Marie threatens to end his wife and child's lives. The governor confesses that the Mai government is working with the military remnants of the purged Shiga Grid. He says that the Shiga grid was cleared because of an electromagnetic experiment that was against the law. Marie asks him why he didn't go public with all this knowledge. The governor says Mai will be killed too if he tells anyone, and the weapon is only to stop the government from killing Mai. The governor blames Marie for telling people about the government's mistakes. The government is trying to make itself look good again. On her way back home, Marie falls to the ground and weeps. Suddenly, a sewer opens right in front of her and both Naoto and Ryuzu step out. Naoto explains that after they fell, an old man helped them turn on the elevator which allowed them to come back up. After learning that Anchor and the giant weapon are headed to Tokyo, Naoto makes up his mind to go to Tokyo to save Anchor. Naoto and Marie dress as evildoers, then chase away Akihabara Grid's residents in Tokyo. By the time the army and weapon fight, no innocent person will get hurt. The fight between the Tokyo army and the gigantic weapon comes to an end. Naoto, Ruzu and Marie head underground. Together, Ruzu and Naoto save Anchor from the mask that has been controlling her every action. On meeting them, Anchor decides to call Marie her mother, Naoto her father, and Ryuzu, her sister. Ryuzu then asks her if she would love to have Naoto as her master. She replies positively and makes Naoto her master. Naoto hears a sound, and in horror, discovers that the army had failed to conquer the weapon, and it is now coming up from the deep underground. The cyborg Anchor brought along with her informs them that the weapon is electromagnetic. Just at that moment, all the gears in Akihabara stop working including the automata and cyborgs. Meanwhile, Kurosawa acts as a consultant for the Ministry of Technology. But, he's just one of Marie's spies trying to get information. Marie is downcast because everything they had fought to protect is now being destroyed by an electromagnetic weapon. She looks around in sadness as she sees that Halter, Ryuzu, and Anchor have also ceased to function. Naoto decides to find a way to demagnetize Ryuzu's gears. Marie goes along with him to fix Halter. Naoto and Marie meet with Mr. Conrad in a workshop disguised as a strip club in UNO Grid. 
Ryuzu is placed on a hangar to cool down. Mr. Conrad promises to do his best to find Halter a new body, while the cyborg who had sent Marie the radio transmission is given the body of a pleasure doll. Marie learns from Nayato that the electromagnetic weapon is being charged. It will take up to 66 and a half hours before it is charged and ready to begin the attack. Marie wonders what to do before the Yatsukahagi, an electromagnetic weapon, can move again. Meanwhile, she sees Nayato and Anchor playing around, and wonders why he isn't taking the fact that there is an impending danger. Nayato tells her he wants revenge against those who hurt Ryuzu. Only then does she realize he's not playing around. Nayato tells Marie they need to take over the Pillar of Heaven to achieve his goal, and bring the evil perpetrators to the book. The Pillar of Heaven is the center of all grids in Japan. Marie chooses the body of a heavily armed automaton known as Genbu for Halter. Within 30 seconds, she connects Halter's brain to the heavily armed automata's body. The old man who helped Nayato turn on the elevator and escape the underground Mai factory is the one causing all the problems. He believes Nayato is why. Mr. Conrad tells Marie that the Japanese government will use the Tall Wind, which is a weapon of mass destruction, to destroy the weapon. Marie tells Hashinamiya, who is the princess of the Pillar of Heaven and Marie's old friend, about Nayato's plan to use the Pillar of Heaven to fry Akihabara up. That way, they can use heat to destroy the weapon before the government launches the Tall Wind. After the government sees the false takeover of the Pillar of Heaven, they think Princess Hashinamiya is being held hostage. They deploy an automata to rescue her, but Halter and another cyborg stop them. After killing all his workers, the old man fires the weapon's main cannon right at the Pillar of Heaven. Nayato and the others are taken aback by this sudden attack as the weapon was still supposed to charge for another 15 hours. As they wonder what caused the change of plans, they hear a man's voice. They turn and see the man who helped Nayato escape the underground. He introduces himself as Jenai Hurayama and tells them he has no interest in a seizure of power. All he wants is to challenge Nayato, who he thinks is why, the great clocksmith who had rebuilt the planet a thousand years ago. On seeing Marie cry, Anchor doesn't wait for an order from Nayato before taking off to go destroy the weapon. Nayato sends Ruzu after her to convince her to be patient and not take any action yet. Nayato and Marie argue, then work together to fix the gears. As they do, they create new gear to replace the old ones. As Anchor gets closer to Yatsukahagi, she turns on all her power and promises to destroy the weapon. She starts to destroy the weapon's clockwork generators. Even after getting tired, she doesn't give up. Anchor gets shot in the stomach before she completes her mission by Jenai. He would have also shot her in the eye but for the timely arrival of Ryuzu. Jenai threatens that the weapon's main cannon will soon begin firing, but nothing of sort happens. Ryuzu proudly tells him about the new gears being created by Nayato and Marie. Upon Anchor's arrival back home, Marie comes to appreciate her more than before and no longer protests when she calls her mother. The story ends as the group decides to travel around the planet to fix thousand-year-old gear. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.